morning, everyone. How are you guys doing out there? Are you inspired? I am totally, totally inspired this morning. I'm super excited, filled with gratitude, because this is this is a launch of Let's Talk Art. And so that you have an idea where this came from. It came from the Art to Heart interviews. And the desire to hear the artists exchange ideas. Artists are geniuses. As you know, they're incredible people that are documenting history, documenting culture with their art. So I wanted to invite artists in group setting to hear them exchange ideas about what's happening in the world, how their art is being influenced by what's happening around them. So I'm going to introduce you to my guests today. I have two guests, Frank Hoffler and Derwin Leiva. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> I'm doing good. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So um, I'll be, this is a, a different format and I just want you guys to feel too, super comfortable. And I want to, I want to share with the audience how you both started with the arts. How do you decide to become an artist? Because I think it's one of the biggest questions usually for the general public. It's okay. So maybe I want to be an artist. How do you, how do you start? So who wants to go first? <laughs> well, I'll go first. Um, I was in high school and uh, was in a wonderful art department, had a great mentor for a teacher. Then I went to college and I had a wonderful professor for um, a mentor. And then I went to additional school and I was under the tutelage of Bigginess Livingstone, a very prominent artist. And it just inspired me to express myself through painting. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm practicing here, as you know. Um, there we, what, what about you? How was your journey? Uh, I always liked painting and I always liked drawing. Uh, as I was growing up in Cuba, it was kind of difficult, especially it was hard to get materials and things to draw. So I remember always, uh, every time that we have uh, cartoons on Sundays, uh, I will go with a notebook in front of the TV and I start drawing whatever it was the cartoon for that weekend. And after that, I just kept drawing with everything that I can find. Uh, my grandfather, he used to make a charcoal from the aroma tree. And I used to go with him and I love watching him making charcoal. And I used that to draw. So uh, that, that was kind of my drawing material. We used to pick up the piece of charcoal. And I remember that we didn't have paper to draw. So I used to pick up the uh, empty boxes of cigarettes that people would throw away after they finished the box. And then I would break the boxes and uh, use the white uh, cover inside. Um, and I used that to draw. Uh, anything that I can use, any surface, uh, I will use it to draw. And I just kept drawing and doing that when I was in Cuba. Uh, when I came here to the United States, uh, I went into the military. And then once I retired, I always continue all my career painting and drawing. Once I finished uh, in the military, then I went to my BFA in painting. But I did my, uh, uh, my BFA in a sculpture, so I want to kind of develop my uh, my work and I start using uh, a sculpture and painting combined. I start doing photography, I did glass, uh, I work with metal, bronze, casting. Uh, so a little wor work, a little bit of everything kind of developing my work. And then I start incorporating everything that I was learning from all these different uh, skills and incorporate into my painting, which normally that's what I do the most. I like painting. Uh, it, it's kind of easy for me. And that's how I got to work on everything. Awesome, awesome. Oh my goodness. I'm inspired by both of you. 
And there win the fact that you were so creative and you don't think about that, right? Like you're watching cartoons, let me draw it. That's, I think, the passion of the artist from the get-go, from childhood. Do you think that, um, and I'm going to ask you a general, a general question now. Do you think that right now, are we being supportive of children? Are we being supportive of uh, the emerging artists, you know, from childhood, from teenage years? Well, I think, I mean, we have a lot of programs, um, but I think that part of that, that, that passion grows with the kid because, uh, I mean, I see how many programs, how many things are that are not used. I mean, I know that we can do more. I know that we can share more. But at the same time, I think that a lot of the, the kids today have a lot of opportunities that they don't take. Because if you have the passion, it doesn't matter if you don't have the material, it doesn't matter if you don't have the class, you can use anything to create art because art is everywhere. You can right. use everything that is around you. You can use pretty much everything that's around you to create art. And that's what is important. I mean, it's, uh, and yes, we can, uh, inspire the kids by sharing our art, by sharing our work. And I think that helps to grow future artists. Absolutely, absolutely. I um, think there could be uh, better instructions from grade school all the way through high school. Um, we eat, sleep and drink art. Our clothing is an art. Our homes are designed by artists. Um, the cars are designed by artists. And yet kids today in grade school, if you tell them to paint grass, they paint one color green. And grass isn't just green. It's got hundreds of different colors in it. And so I think we need to expose the kids to this idea of seeing the world around them instead of just knowing or believing that an orange is all orange. It's not just all orange. And I think we need to teach the kids how to see in this world today. Well, well, I, I love what you're saying, Frank. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions now about your work. And I love what you just said because behind you there's all these colors. <laughs> you're a colorist. And it's so important, right? It's so important we that we come out of the box. And I believe uh, following what you're saying about kids painting the orange orange. Well, one is they see it, but at the same time, we're kind of training kids and training our, our youth to think this way, you know, like this is the way you should be thinking, this is what you should be doing. And we need to break that, right? We need to break that to to create this world of creativity to to boost that. How 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 did it happen for you? Because your art is, it's all about explosion. It's all about colors, movement, forms, and you need a lot of freedom, right? You need a lot of liberty in your, in your mind to create what you're doing. How do you boost that? How, how did it happen for you? Um, driving into work, I will go by a stream and I'll notice that color in the water is is, is so vibrant or different, or I'll see a cloud in the sky and I'll try to analyze what colors make up that cloud. You know, is there, are there grays in there? Is it bluish gray, cerulean blue? I don't, I look at everything and I try to analyze where the color is coming from and, and how can I make that happen in my work? I love color. Um, and I try to push it as far as I can. Even in my realistic paintings, um, I try to achieve the closest that I can to what would be believable. So I love color and I'll always paint with color.
All right, I'm here. Um, so Frank, can you share a little bit about your work? Um, this piece, in fact, in front of you, I came up with the idea um, a couple of years ago when the elections were happening and all these riots were happening around the world, around the country anyway, and I just decided I we all should come together. We should just mm -hmm. all forget all of this. I'm this color, I'm that color, I'm this race or that religion or that ethnicity. And so each one of the colors in this painting uh, represents a different person, a different country, a different religion. And they sh everyone should be coming together and shaking hands. So really this is like my interpretation or my abstraction of hands shaking around the world. Um, we all put our pants on the same way. We all need to get along. This is a wonderful world we live in, and I think we should take advantage of it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that message. Um, I think it's so important, right? The beginning. Again, it's like an explosion of colors. <laughs> yes. Right. How it's is your routine? Like, how do you maintain? I always like being inspired is a full-time job, right? <laughs> yes, it really is. It takes me about, oh, maybe a week or so. I'll get an idea that I want to talk about, um, I don't know, um, health or something. And right. it'll take me about a week or so, and I run it through my head over and over and over again. How do I want to talk about this? How do I want to express this? How am I going to show what I'm really feeling about this? And then all of a sudden, finally, it'll be like, ah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint with this. I'm going to do that. It's going to be this big. I'm going to use a palette knife instead of a brush. I'm going to use um, thin paint, lean paint, or really fat, impasto. And I just go to work at it. I usually finish all of my paintings within about three hours. Um, I usually don't go back to them. Um, the big one, Unity, or hands shaking, that took about five or six hours. Um, otherwise, um, I was taught, you know, you need to focus, ask yourself the right question before you start painting, and then start painting. So I ask myself, how do I want to talk about this subject matter? Linearly, do I want to talk about it color-wise? Do I want to talk about it uh, impressionistically? And then I focus on that and I start painting. And I don't paint like a madman. I I choose my colors, I choose my brushes, and then I apply the paint. And I'm done in about three hours. I'm usually exhausted and happy with the results. <laughs> well, so you never go back to the painting. This no. is incredible. That's awesome. That's genius actually, right? So you're totally prepared before you come here to the completion of this. Yes, yes. Wow. I have it pretty much figured out in my head, and then I then and then I start working. Wow, wow, wow! My mentor told me that you know if it takes you longer than three hours to paint, you're going to be bored with it. You're going to be tired of, and you're not going to be working well, and you're just going to be going over and over and over again. You need to figure out what you want to say, say it, and be done. So that's what I do. Wow, that's incredible! <laughs> now I want to hear Dermy because. I am curious. <laughs> this is a feast for the audience, really hearing two artists. Um, he's probably totally different. Dervin, how are you doing? <laughs> this is yeah. like Frank. What do you think of Frank's technique? It's, it's like mind boggling, right? I mean, yes, I definitely enjoy hearing Frank, how he works, because I definitely work, you know, some things are similar. Some other ones are very different of the technique that he used, but uh, I love how he, the work that he does. Yeah. So how, how is your technique? So for me, I kind of similar to Frank, I have an idea on what I want to paint. And I usually get a painting in my head before I even start it. Um, I mean, I see the finished work. I see the colors that I'm going to use and the lines, everything. So when I start the process of painting, I already know what it's going to look like. And then in the process, I start changing some colors. And uh, maybe when I start putting values and I look at it, i like, okay, I like this color better. Or maybe this one doesn't work. Or maybe I change some line here and there. But for the most part, I already know exactly what my painting is going to look before I even start. That's it. Oh, and, and I so get idea. Okay, okay, that's so awesome. So I normally get ideas from anything. I mean, I can be walking on the street and I see like somebody standing in a corner and I like the way that he's standing. I like how the hair looks. I like, well, 
the position. And that's what I get the idea. Uh, I'm reading a newspaper, I'm watching TV, and I see an image that I like that bring my attention. And that's how I get my idea. And normally I try to incorporate these ideas to my background as Cuban. Uh, I try to use the Cuban landscape as part of uh, my work. I try to use the uh, Cuban music as part of my work. So I incorporate all these ideas into my painting. And, um, you know, to me, it was interesting when Frank was talking about, like for him it was like three hours and he's done. Uh, I do a little different for me. Uh, normally I start, I don't like to start with a white canvas. Uh, I usually put like a red iron oxide layer on my paintings. Um, and then I start drawing with charcoal and Ooh. once I do the drawing with charcoal, uh, if you look at that part of the process, you can now understand anything because it's just lines everywhere and it's hard mm -hmm. to understand. I think I, I'm the only one who is able to see what I'm trying to do. And then I start, uh, uh I use blue just kind of like to go over all the lines with charcoal and then start putting layer of colors into it. But once I start getting into the paintings, I can spend hours. Um, sometimes I been painting for like 15, 18 hours straight, you know, in, in a day. I like, I just work through, uh, especially if I have like a deadline and there is a work that I want to do for an exhibition or anything like that. And I get into it. I can be 15, 20 hours painting just all day. And I think this is part of uh, me being in the military, a lot of the physical, because he, he, yes, like, you know, Frank is right. Once you're like three, four hours working, uh, you get tired. So you need to rest, you need yeah. to do something, move around, walk around, uh, try to do something different, rest for a little bit. But then I always come back to it and then continue painting. Uh, so for me, my paintings take a lot of hours, has a lot of details. Um, there is some paintings that I spend 150 hours in a painting. So if I do three hours, uh, you know, two, three hours in a day, it takes me a long time uh, to do a painting, uh, which sometimes happen because I don't, you know, uh, sometimes I get into a painting, I start working on it. And then when I get to part of the process, like half of the painting, I try to start working a different painting. And then I don't come back to that one maybe a month later, or I leave it there for a little bit and then, trying to working in a different painting, just not to get bored because it's, it's part of the process. You know, you get to uh, uh, part of uh, the painting where you're like fighting with the process and trying to figure it out what you want to do, what colors you're going to use, or there is something that you don't like and you're trying to fix it. But at the same time, uh, to me, that's interesting because it's, it's kind of like problem solving. And every painting has their own problems that you have to solve. So every painting becomes something different. You don't want, you know, uh, not every painting for me is the same. I try to do every single painting. I like it to be by itself. Uh, like all of them are related. All of them have the same subject. But when you look at it, you, you don't, you don't see one painting. Oh, this one is just exactly like the other one, or exactly like the other one. I like every painting to stand by itself. So, it takes me a long time to, to create that for the process of being able to to come out with all these paintings. That painting that you're showing right there, uh, that's uh, one of my bigger paintings. Um, it, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's uh, 108 by 168 inches, so that's yeah. huge. Yeah, yes, uh, it is really big. It's nine by 14 feet, so it's like the whole wall. And actually, I did a painting uh, inspired, or, or the inspiration for that painting was when uh, Fidel Castro died. Mm. Um, I was inspired by Cuba turning into something different. Uh, so um, the name of the painting is, is The Celebration. And the uh, this is the cathedral in Havana. That's where the background is. And the, the musicians are in front of the cathedral and they're uh, playing music, they're celebrating, but they're not celebrating the day of Castro. What they are celebrating is the beginning of a new Cuba, a beginning of a new era for Cuba in the history books. And right. that was my inspiration. I want people to be happy that now, okay, maybe something else is going to come out of this, something new. Uh, we're going to have a different system. We're going to have better life. 
Uh, and that's what the painting was about, about celebrating a new beginning for Cuba. And hope, this is beautiful. Music is your your main theme, right? That's that's kind of a yes, I do because I you love work. I love music because to me everybody loves music. No matter where yeah. you're from, no matter what kind of person you are, uh you can be from any part of the world. Everybody likes music. Everybody yeah. has their own music, everybody has their uh the, the music that they like. And uh, I think, in a way, music makes everybody happy. Most people, when they are, uh, when they're happy, they listen to music. And sometimes, when they're not happy, they listen to music just to feel better. Yeah. So I try to bring music whenever I can into my work. Uh, I like colors as well. I like to put a lot of colors into my work um, because, to me, it, it brings the painting alive and makes people feel better uh, when they look at, at the paintings. So yes, music is a very important to me. And also growing in Cuba, I mean, music was part of my daily life. I mean, growing up, you listen to music every day. It was just everywhere you go, every celebration, every gathering, always music was part of that. So it's good to have part of the culture into every single painting. So every, I think everybody's, and I'm gonna uh, bring Frank to the, to the conversation. I think everybody reflects in um, a person. Oh, this is from an artist here in Cartagena. Uh, he's painting scenes that he sees. You know, every artist is reflecting part of their culture somehow in their work, even if it's subconsciously. What do you think about that, Frank? Is, does that happen to you too? Yes, I, I do believe that it has happened um, because it comes from the way I was raised, the way I grew up, um, the things that were important to me as a child and growing up. The th now I'm thinking back on those things and I'm expressing those through my paintings, I believe. Mm. Yeah, I love that, you know, there are so many different backgrounds, right? And we have so many different messages. And yet, well, some artists are coming, like Darwin has, has a different history, right? And I have told him personally that that he's got a history that he's been documenting somehow, right? They're in, in a different way, uh, documenting culture, but at the same time, bringing that, that culture and also the history of it, where I come from, uh, what are my values, what, what, is, what are my colors, what is my music? And putting that into a canvas is, is so incredible. I, I really admire both of you. In, in every artist, I see that even subconsciously, it comes out. Even if we say, let me paint like I'm not me. <laughs> it's, it's going to be there. Like that common denominator. Like for Frank, I see his forms and colors. He's, he's an explosion of colors. You know, I don't think... Even if in his, in, and if you saw some of his works, they were like the background was muted, probably a gray color, but uh, there's a color explosion in the middle, even if it's in the form of a line or in, in their wind's case. Um, and I think this is also, uh, this is great for the audience. It's like educating the audience is, is really awesome. It's uh, music, right? The theme, the com the common theme uh, of your work is music, but it's also somehow projecting and sharing your heritage with the world. Is that intended? That yes, way? definitely. Uh, and you know, I want to tell like a story with each painting. It's not I just don't put the music there. Like for me, in, in the process of creating my work, every time that I'm thinking about a painting, I always create a story behind the painting. Uh, so like, for instance, if I see somebody, like I said before, standing in the corner and I like how that person looks and I want to incorporate that person to my painting, I'm always thinking, what are the circumstances around the person? Why is standing there? Why? So I create a story of why the person is there. Why, you know, if it's a girl, is she waiting for a guy? Is she trying to uh, go to her, to dance or she's dancing or what is she's doing so i create a behind story about every painting 
and, and this is just um you know like this painting uh that one um 90 miles is actually a, a cuban living you know trying to leave cuba to miami which is 90 miles away from havana and in a raft and the reason i painted this is because myself with my family we tried to leave cuba illegally you know because leaving cuba back then was right. illegal you couldn't leave right. and if you get caught you will go to jail so we were trying you know the situation was pretty bad we were trying to leave cuba and we tried to live in a raft many many times so uh, um, this is part of my story but it's also the story of every cuban person that lives in the island because many people die in the ocean trying to leave me so i try to represent this in every single painting so i create my own story in every painting and i put it there now when people look at my painting i don't you know if Obviously, if they're not familiar with the story or they don't know what is going on, they're just gonna see it as a as a painting. They're just gonna find whatever they is related to it. They they're gonna relate to the painting in a different way, and that's okay because the way that I show my painting to the public is for people to connect in a different way. Uh, I have so many people who come and they tell me their own story and they can relate to my painting, looking at what I just provide for them. And they tell me a different story that have nothing to do with what I'm thinking. But to me, it's interesting to see that people have a different view. And we're looking at the same painting, you know, but I speak to a lot of people in a universal way. But at the same time, I tell my story. Wow, that's beautiful, too. And, and I think what you said is the, is the story of many people in different ways. It is true, right? I mean, I, I come from the coast also, so for me, it's a different story. When I see um, when I see that, of course, I am reminded of your reality, of the reality of, of many Cubans who had to endure this this journey. But also from my perspective, you know, I related to my own to my own experience. So yeah, you're right on that. Um, oh, Roxanne, thank you. She says it's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> in in um in, in Frank's case, I want to share Frank because Frank, in your case, in, 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 are you aware of changing the mood with colors, or is that intended? Do you study color in that way, or it just comes uh, spontaneously from you? No, I do try to use the color to uh, influence a, a mood. Okay. In and okay. um, I've had a lot of people um, viewing my work in different galleries um, talking to me about, well, you know, this one doesn't mean too much to me or um, or this one. You must have been in a bad mood when you painted this one. And I laughed to myself because it evoked an emotion, a strong emotion. And I, I really like that. Um, they can tell me what they want about it or they can tell me they absolutely love it or they want to buy it. But I want to find out why and how did the color influence him? How did the how did the color uh, make them feel? That's what I'm after. And then, and people are connecting regardless, yeah. right? They're connecting somehow in, in a different way as well, right? Correct. Probably they're putting their own, their own concept, their own experience with the artwork. Right. Um, that last painting you saw was a commission piece for some people in Florida and they're boaters and they live on the ocean and they just gave me free reign and said, you know, we, um, we like the blue of the ocean and we like we like to sail. So I have a sail in there, whether or not somebody can see it. Um, I have the green in there representing, you know, the, the land that they're on, but the water is representing all by the, all the different shades of blue from morning color to evening color. And so um, to me, it's, it's powerful and um, it works. That's eight feet tall by um, I think five feet wide or something. How would you like, how would you, and that question goes to both. Uh, I'd love to hear the answers. How would you like the world to receive artists? Um, and this is, I know it's very open, but how would you like to be received by the audience per, and perceive, maybe perceive is the right way to, to say it. What type of uh, message is there a specific message that you would like the audience to receive from you when when they experience your artworks? 
Well, I mean, for me, when I kind of stand in front of the canvas, uh, I feel like in a different world. I feel like I'm inside my world and where there is no limitations. I mean, uh, everything is uh, whatever I can imagine. And is what is important is the way that I can transfer that into everybody else's eyes. Uh, I can express my feelings. I can express my dreams uh, with my brush. I can uh, ch share my culture and my music through my canvas. And pretty much I'm telling my story using circles, using lines, using colors. So it's another way to communicate with the viewer and I'm creating a reaction. Like some people have a good reaction and some people may see it different, but I'm interacting with the audience. And that's what is important is have that conversation where you can share who you are and your culture and your style. Wow, thank you so much, Darwin. What do you think, Frank? <laughs> oh, I really go at painting in the way that I would like people to experience something or um, have it click to them or have it bring about memories of the past or bring about um, a, a big emotional impact to their life, that they really want this painting and that they really have to have it. Um, because every time they look at it, it's going to uh, inspire them to do something or to be a better person or, or to relax. Um, so I go about my art in, I just, I paint so that I can express myself. And then it's very gratifying to me when people tell me how they see it or what, what they get out of it. Um, they don't have to get the same thing that I put in it out, uh, which I'm happy sometimes that they don't. A lot, of, a lot of my paintings or series of paintings that I've done, I told my wife, if people could only read my paintings, they would know my soul because I paint from what I really feel. And so there's a lot of hidden meanings and had a lot of hidden uh, things in my paintings. Wow. I love what you just said because I always say that anybody ha that has a painting has a piece of my soul, right? Yeah. If, they, if they have a piece of the soul of the artist, it really comes from there. The artist is not calculating. We're, you know, heart and soul there. Heart and soul in the canvas, in the camera, or whatever medium, uh, the sculpture, even their computer when they're creating. It, it's very, I think, I, I think it's very spontaneous. And it's, it's, it's like a communion, like a marriage, right? Between mm -hmm. the canvas, the artist, uh, our connection to source. Do you, and I'm going to that, that's a, that's a, another question. And um, it's okay if you don't believe, I'm just curious, and probably the audience is curious too. Um, I believe in connecting, like I need to connect to my source. I feel that my inspiration comes from a higher ground or a different, um, how do you say that? um universe it, it comes from up above right for me because that was maybe the way i grew up or my belief or what was ingrained in me do you share that belief or do you how do you connect how do you make sure that when you're sitting in there it's like that that connection is happening that connection between inspiration and you i do believe that i um i believe in god and i believe that um I'm inspired. I believe I've been given a, a God-given talent. I think everybody has a God-given talent. It doesn't have to be painting. It could be writing. It could be singing. It could be taking care of kids. Um, and I think we need to use it our entire life. So I'm planning on painting until I can't pick up a brush anymore. And I really enjoy what I do. And I'm thankful every day for ideas that flood into my mind. Um, I do paint maybe two or three paintings in a day sometimes because I'm not done talking about that subject. If I'm painting an orchid, I'll paint an orchid in the morning and I'll turn the pot and I'll paint it in another way and then I'll turn it again and paint it another way because I'm not done expressing all of the love or the feeling that I have about what I'm looking at. So mm -hmm. I think everybody should be you know, using their talents 24 seven. 
Oh, wow. Thank you. What do you say, Darwin? Yes, definitely. I think that we all connected and I think that it's important uh, to be thankful for the, uh, you know, for the talent that we've been given. And like Fran said, I think everyone has a talent. And uh, to me, you know, it's important to share uh, this talent with everybody because I think that's the most important. You know, a lot of the times we get talents and we just keep it to ourselves. But I think the most important thing about having a talent especially like, you know, art and painting. And it's just to be able to share with the world, be able to show all the people what you can do. So to inspire the world. So yes, that's what I think. Absolutely. And I believe I, I always, always thought of, of my, any gift, right, that we receive. And I think we receive gifts throughout our lifetime, by the way. Mm -hmm. We are like, they, they're like delivered. <laughs> they're delivered to us timely right probably frank uh he thought of himself as an artist and then he got delivery of here it is boom the color goes to you and 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 that happens right or 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 derwin was starting to create and probably when you were creating as a child you didn't think of music then and then it's like here the, there is the gift of music um and, and I believe that's our responsibility to share that because when we share that, we make not just the world a better place. That is a phrase we use, but it, it, it really is because we change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And the minute you are affecting one person, you're already making the world a better place. Yes. Someone is uh, sharing the color and vibrancy of Frank's art is always impressive. Nice to hear you talk about the inspiration for all the colors. Joel, oh, thank you, Joel. That was nice. <laughs> Frankie had a comment for you. Um, so we do affect, even if we affect one child, one adult, one person, we're already changing the world with our work. And the gift of art is a responsibility. I always say that because there's a lot of people in, um, in a world that do not recognize art that way. We're not appreciate it that way especially at the beginning of the journey when the artist is just starting so many artists and i interviewed an artist this morning who said you know i was discouraged and i remember being discouraged also because they would tell me uh there's no money in art what are you gonna do so it is challenging but it's always good to remind uh those who are out there who have the gift that this is a responsibility that we need to share Mm -hmm. And you guys are creating, you have incredible careers. And going to the careers, tell me about what's coming up this year for you. Is there any plans, any big things happening between now and next year or 2023? Because we're almost there. <laughs> well, um, since being at the gala in New York with you, um, I was invited to submit 11 images to a gallery in Rome, and I'm sure it's all because of you, Viviana. And um, then also a, a gallery in Spain has reached out to me and wanted to um, have some images. And I am I just was notified I'm in a show in um, Missouri this coming month. And that all it, uh, makes me feel great, and it also inspires me to paint and um, makes me feel like what I'm doing is being noticed and and is being um, accepted. And it makes me happy. So I'm planning on painting up a storm. That is so awesome. So I miss a little bit there. I don't know if the audience did too, but you're having, you said you're having a show in, uh, you're submitting, you're submitting 11 images to a gallery in Rome and you're having a show in, in Missouri. Yeah, in Missouri. Um, okay. Yes, Kansas City, Missouri. And, um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. Yeah, That's so I'm thrilled. Activity, activity. I love to hear that. Thanks. How about you, Darwin? Well, the main thing that I'm concentrating now is uh, I have an exhibition coming in Miami, and that's what I'm spending most of my time is just working on my new pieces that I'm trying to show on that. Uh, exhibition in Miami. Uh, I also had three invitations to show uh, one in Portugal, one in France, and one in Italy, 
which I'm kind of like in the process right now and working all the details and trying to figure it out, the logistic, because uh, it's a lot of work to move all my work from here, from Hawaii, anywhere in the world. So um, I have these those three possible upcoming exhibitions, which I still working, but for sure, uh, December, I'm going to be showing in Miami. So that's what I got for now. Awesome. So we know we can catch you somewhere, right? And um, we're coming to the top of the hour already. So I want to thank you guys and invite the audience. Uh, you guys, uh, Jennifer, if you can put both of their websites, you know where to go, guys, if you want to explore more about the artists. So if you're in Missouri, check out where Frank's um, exhibition is. It's going to be on his website. So you go visit him at his website, at his, at his exhibition. And Derwin is going to be in Miami, December, right? Yes. So check out his website to stay tuned to these artists. There's a lot happening in the world of the art so make sure to stay tuned to them because i i always love to explore what's coming up for the artists it's like i i love to peek in you know the studios and see what you guys are working on so let's leave that as an intrigue so people uh get curious and go want to check you out <laughs> thank you so much for sharing this moment with me i'm so happy that we got to explore how do you like this format do you like chatting and exchanging the ideas i do very much i think this is yeah. very interesting and i want to thank you viviana yeah i think it's, yeah. it's fun right yes <laughs> definitely i think it's very interesting i mean especially that we can debate and we can uh, share our ideas with other artists uh, yes i really yeah. enjoy having frank in the show with us and then thank you viviana for having me thank it was nice you. having you everyone <laughs> thank you and for those who are watching you know what i'm gonna tell you don't forget to stay super super inspired